Hello everyone, Crydax here, and today I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that have helped me throughout the early game. Starting out, I want to talk about slide jumping. Uh, this was nerfed quite a bit, so you no longer need to feel like you need to slide jump everywhere. However, it is still technically faster. I did some testing. Some people online were saying that it's been nerfed and it no longer provides any boost, and that's just not true. It still does provide about a 10% boost, but that's not so much as it used to be, and you don't need to feel like you need a slide jump everywhere. Just regular running will work fine, and this does apply to both Caterium or uh, Blade Runners and non-Blade Runners uh, alike, so you can just walk around your factory like a normal engineer now. The second thing I want to bring up is that Alt plus right mouse button brings up a stamp menu. And when you place a stamp, it will go wherever your cursor is pointed. So you can put a stamp on a distant area if you want to make a note to go there later. Maybe you see a drop pod in the distance or an ore deposit. So you can just easily place a stamp and then um, go there later. Item number three I want to discuss is that you can leave hard drives uh, unselected. So you can build up a large stockpile of them to select. Currently there is a bug, as you can see so that you can't actually uh, see all of them in the menu yet. I'm sure that will be fixed soon. Uh, hopefully by the time this video is released, it'll be fixed. But yeah, you can research as many hard drives as you want and then select them. Uh, that way you can kind of compare which ones you have together and maybe select one of your favorites for a certain item like motors, or you can find two that work well together and then select them together. So that way you have a little bit more information before you make your decisions. Now this is a feature that was actually added before 1.0, but I wanted to highlight it because it is one that I did not know about until recently, and if you've been away from the game for a while waiting for 1.0 like I was, you will love this feature. What you can do is you can take a power pole, and you can build it onto an already existing power line, and not only that, but then you can place it somewhere else. And now you'll have an entirely new connection to that uh, power pole. This allows you to easily add more connections where previously you were lacking some. If you need more connections in a certain area, you can just place another pole right next to the one you already have, and now you have extra connections waiting for you. So it's really handy to be able to do that. Um, I can't believe I didn't know that that feature was a thing until just a couple weeks ago, so I love that feature. Tip number five is that you can carry a lot of ore in your inventory. You do not need to automate everything from minute one of the game, especially early on when you're working through the MAM researches and you're wanting to have more of that quality of life, you know, whether it's the Blade Runners or the Dimensional Depots in Alien Technology. So what I recommend is actually when you find an ore deposit, just plop down a bunch of miners, grab a bunch of ore, and walk home. You don't have to do anything more than that to work on your MAM researches, and you don't need thousands and thousands and thousands of these ores to just get the quality of life stuff going. Tip number six. Drop pods can have some pretty fat loot. I was able to research production amplifier before I was even done with phase two of the space elevator, aka before I had unlocked circuit boards. That's because I found 50 circuit boards over in a drop pod area, and that will allow you to use summer sloops to boost your production so much earlier. And there are quite a few other researches in the game that you can get in the MAM long before you naturally would have been able to get them if you go hunting. Tip number seven is don't sleep on alternate recipes. Some of these are extremely strong and will allow you to either save buildings, save power, or save resources, usually some combination of all of those. And certain combinations of alternate recipes can be incredibly strong, such as bolted frame here mixed with steel screw is going to allow you to make an absurd amount of frames very quickly with just a little bit of steel and a little bit of iron. So I highly recommend checking out uh, nearby hard drives, you know, do some hard drive hunting, it is worth your time. Tip number eight is go hunting for Sam. That's the strange alien matter, it is a purple ore, not quartz. Uh, you want to get that ASAP and there's quite a few nodes in the world now they're not necessarily just sitting out in the open, but if you go looking, you'll find it eventually. 
I will tell you, these dimensional depots are a game changer. You need them. <laughs> you, you just, they change everything. Being able to access all of what you want from the cloud and being able to build anything you need at a moment's notice just because you have these dimensional depots, it makes Sam the most necessary resource in the game. So go looking for Sam. If you don't want to go online to, you know, use a map to find where it is, then go hunting for it yourself. You will not regret finding Sam and unlocking the dimensional depots. You will need to find a few Mercer Spheres as well. Each dimensional depot requires one Mercer Sphere, so make sure you grab a few of those along the way. You only need one per depot, so you don't need tons and tons and tons, because generally you only need one depot per item anyway. But there are Mercer Spheres all around the map, so it won't be too hard to find the amount that you need. Tip number nine that I have is design movement into your factory. What you don't want is to constantly be running into belts and have to slide underneath them. That can be such a pain in the butt. Just make a catwalk so you can walk above everything. This also gives you a better perspective for building and modifying, and I think it also gives you a nice view of your factory. Things just look nicer from above. So make sure to design movement into your factory so that you're not constantly having to jump over things or have to slide under things. It's so nice when you can just walk where you want to go. I go as far as even putting belts as uh, little people movers and, for example, over here between my two factory buildings, I designed some people mover belts and that way I can just easily go from one building to the other along these little walkways. Obviously you need to design what looks good for you. Some people wouldn't like the aesthetic of this, but my point is you need to be able to move easily from one factory building to another or from one area to another. Tip number 10 is me wanting to highlight which quality of life upgrades you really wanna rush from the very beginning. Mycelia is a huge one because of the parachute. You only need a little bit of fabric, which needs a little bit of mycelia and biomass. So as soon as you have the chainsaw, you can go find some mushrooms. Uh, depending on which starting area you're in, they're going to look different and they don't always look like mushrooms. There are those growing coral things that are also mycelia or those little hexagon half domes that are on the ground. Those are mycelia. Anything that looks like it could be a type of fungus is probably going to be mycelia when you chainsaw it. So I would highly recommend rushing the parachute because it allows you to glide. If you are remembering the old parachute that Satisfactory had, it's way better than that. They're not single use anymore. You don't have to craft multiple of them. It's more like a glider from, you know, an open world Zelda game or something where you just can glide from one area to another and it allows you to cross large distances and never have to take fall damage again. The other ones you really need to worry about are the Blade Runners which are not Caterium. I think they used to be Caterium. That's why my brain keeps going there. But the Blade Runners are in the Quartz tree now, and they're over here. And all you need is some silica and modular frames, so you can get them pretty early. As soon as you can handcraft modular frames, I recommend going, grabbing some Quartz. Like I said, you can carry a bunch of Quartz in your inventory with the earlier tips, so you really don't need to automate silica or Quartz. You just need to go get some. And if you don't have the the initial quartz, just find a quartz rock. Pretty much all around hills and cliffs, you're gonna find lots of rocks where you can find a quartz rock. Then you can do this first research to scan for quartz and find an entire vein which you can plop down portable miners on. Finally, the last one I think you really wanna rush is the zip line. This is the easiest way early game to gain a lot of elevation. If you're wanting to climb up a cliff, the, the way that I really like to climb cliffs in the early game is I'll get a power pole and I'll put it up on a cliff. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to aim. You can always put a foundation sticking out of the cliff to attach the power pole to. If you don't like to do that because it feels pretty cheaty, that's fine, but you can grab your power pole, put it on the cliff, get another power pole right next to you, and then you can zip line up that cliff. This works on very steep cliffs as well, so you can get a lot of elevation. You know, you can climb up that entire cliff over there with, with uh, power poles and zip lines. So I highly recommend rushing the zip line and the parachute and the Blade Runners as early ways to get around the world, both exploration and just getting around your factory. You know, you can easily make little elevators with your zip line like this guy, and that's long before you have jump pads even, and before the jetpack, and before hyper tubes. So I highly recommend zip lines, and the blade runners, and the parachute. 
The 11th and final tip I have for you today is don't be scared of the blueprint designer. I know it may feel a bit intimidating and you may be a little bit uh, too concerned about having to make the perfect builds, but I promise you if you just grab a few constructors, even if it's only two constructors, you plop them next to each other, you power it up with a power pole, and then you say to yourself, okay, let's get the mergers or splitters for our manifold here and I'm building the quickest and dirtiest blueprint ever but I'm just trying to show you basically how convenient it can be because then once we have these mergers lined up in front you're never gonna have to connect all these individual belt segments again you can just Go over here and we're all powered up. We've got our inputs, we've got our outputs. You can even select the recipe if you really want to, though often I leave it unselected. And you can just say constructors X2. You can set your icon over here. You can select a directory if you want to get a little fancy with sorting them. And now you've got your blueprint. And it's so convenient because now if you want to set up a little spot of constructors, you can just plop that down in the world. And now all you have to do is connect whatever your input is to this belt. And then you've got your output right here. And you don't have to do anything else. All right, sorry, that was the output on that side. Um, yeah, I guess you have to power it up, but that's it. It makes things so much easier, and you can obviously make blueprints much larger than this, and they're also very easy to deconstruct because you can go to dismantle mode, blueprint, and deconstruct the whole thing at once if you'd like to do that as well. So I highly recommend checking out blueprints. Don't be scared of them. Just make some really simple ones for two or three constructors or two or three assemblers, and it'll save you so much time setting up the inputs and outputs. Just having the manifolds pre-attached to the buildings alone is a huge boost. Obviously having the power hooked up, and then you can do even more complicated things like if you had, you know, constructors on the other side, we can have those feeding into the same things. And then we can have the inputs going over there and we can add a second floor to this. You can build two floors of constructors in one blueprint. And this is just the blueprint designer mark one. And so they get even bigger as you go throughout the game. So don't be scared of blueprints, check them out. And those are all the tips I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think down in the comments about what tips I should cover in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.